Hey guys, so what we're going to start to do now is we are going to start to highlight this and we're going to be going for kind of a, a cooler atmosphere here um, and we're going to be adding in uh, small amounts as we go of this ghost white. It's a really, really nice color uh, from Reaper and yeah, that's, that's how we're going to do it. So um, again, I always do like to test this out just by painting a very small you know, it's a very small area here, just to make sure that it's it's going to look the right way, and uh, I just always let that dry. And so we're getting a really nice little stepping effect right there. I really like that. So we're gonna go ahead and just thin it down, just a touch, and we're gonna keep on uh, going along with this. Um, again, really maintaining the same type of brush stroke as we go. And I, you can also see that we've switched back to the larger Windsor & Newton size 3 here, just because we're attacking uh, larger, more open surface areas again. It just gets it gets difficult as we, you know, get into these smaller little cracks and crevices and so on and so forth. So, nothing wrong with switching up which brushes we are using. As you can see too, I'm using a lot of like the side of my brush. Uh, just it just works better for us. I'm not doing the that kind of striping that you know that crossing over. Um, just I'm just in the mood to do a little bit of a different brush stroke with this guy. Something to keep in mind too here is like we're gonna do distressing and cracking and. Uh, we're going to be adding this is just kind of like the first this is like the opening part of that uh, we want to get it we want to get it as nice as we can of course but this is just one part of the whole uh, but this is like the foundation right so we just want to make sure that it's it's looking nice Now, if I wanted to make this feel warm, and you're more than welcome to if you are going to follow along with this tutorial, um, to make this atmosphere a little bit warmer, you can add in um, something like sunny skin tone or even yellow, like a pure yellow would be really, really nice with this. But um, yeah, I'm opting to go with a little bit of a colder atmosphere. I just think that the figure calls for it. Very careful here. The highlighting process is really where we can start to correct some things if we need to. And so I, I tend to be a little bit more cautious with especially in these more detailed areas where I am applying things. And up here I will do this across motion because it's necessary.
the nice thing too about working with a larger brush and why I, I like this and kind of have started developing you know my painting this way is that uh, you, you have a you have such a large body that it allows you to be able to paint and paint and paint and paint and paint without having to go and reload the brush um, it's just it's just nice not to have to come back to the palette every five seconds. Okay, so uh, we're going to go ahead and continue to mix up. Now, with this mixing up, I'm going to kind of leave some of it before, just so that if we ever need to come back, you know, after the airbrushing or anything like that, we have the option to. And I'm also going to thin this down just a, a little bit as we go. Testing it here on my thumb. You can also always use your thumb just to make sure that it is drying the right way. So there we go. Um, that's the difference between the two. It's a little bit extreme, but I do like Something else that um, has kind of come to mind that we can do here is we can always modulate this and what I mean by saying that and it's kind of a, a little bit more of like a historical like tank um, type of a word <laughs> but uh, is that we can we can take like the complement of this color uh, and we can spray it on top of it and it can desaturate it and denature it even a little bit more than we already have it. And that, that's really great because it gives us a little bit more of a variety of colors and um, it, it, again it'll help us blend things out just a touch more than they already are. We're already getting a lot of really great contrast though, which is what I was hoping for. Some of these parts I just need to be able to hop into with a, a smaller size brush, which we're going to be switching to after this round of highlighting. On the back here, I'm not quite as concerned. I feel like I have a little bit of like a basic uh, shapes going on, and I really like how it looks, so I'm just leaving it. The nice thing too, I hope that you guys can see, is like as you progress with these layers, um, they start cut going on faster and faster and faster because the area that we're painting keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and that's really how it should be. Uh, is that you know because uh, you know we don't want to spend forever and a day painting these these things, and we need to be able to develop these methods that are gonna 
help us paint faster. And that, that really is a method, is just the stepping, these layers just let you do this aggressive highlighting and shadowing. And the result of that is, is that we get to move faster. So, um, mixing this up. And this is kind of almost getting like minty, minty green. Also, paint a little bit of it on the miniature itself. I think this might be a little bit too much, but that's okay. Uh, we can always. We have a bit of our mix from before. Test it again. Always, always testing. Every time. probably do this layer and then one more before we come in with the airbrush and smooth it out. So th this is very pastel at this point. Um, that's okay. <laughs> One of the things that I, I keep getting questions about just uh, on the topic of getting pastel is people will get to this point with painting pastel, they'll go like, oh man, it's my paint's getting really chalky. That's the voice that I'm giving the people whose paint's really chalky. But um, anyway, yeah, they'll, they'll say, oh man, my paint's getting really chalky, I don't know why. Essentially, the answer to that is your paint's either too thin or it's not thick enough. So there's like a happy medium. Some of these colors that are a little bit more pastel or a little bit more white, um, for instance, when you're working with them, you can, if they're too thin or if they're not thin enough, they get that grainy, chalky appearance. If they're not thick enough, the same thing can happen. And it's something that you do have to be kind of aware of. Uh, depending on the brand of the paint because some like Reaper Reaper is kind of that's usually how it works is like it's it's just not where it needs to be in terms of consistency and it's such a such a big uh, it's such an important lesson that you have to learn uh, unfortunately you know you can only show it so much but uh, a lot of it comes to you have to be brave with the way that you're applying colors uh, and part of that is knowledge, right? Part of it is learning how shapes and how, uh, you know, these these different forms come together and commingle and um, all kinds of stuff. So if, you're, if your paint is getting chalky, don't worry too much. Just keep practicing and practicing and you will definitely get the hang of it. step up is what we're going to do.
you're notice you're probably noticing that I'm using like the tip of my brush right now. Um, that's okay. It, once you start getting your highlights this small, and you're trying to keep like consistent brush stroke along the side, um, it, it's almost necessary just because the area has get it's gotten so so small. Like down here at the base where there's still room to play, yeah, sure. You know, do what you need to. Um, switch back to the side of your brush like you've been doing, but um, for these teeny tiny little areas, you kind of have to kind of have to use the tip. Okay, you guys, so that's really it. Um, I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit just so that you can really see what it looks like. It's it's not perfect, right? We don't want it to be perfect. Um, we want contrast, we want depth, and we want a range of colors, and that's what we have and what we've created with these, these very few colors um, already from the get-go. So I'm very excited about it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and stop it now. The next segment is gonna be on uh, airbrushing and getting, getting the airbrush the tint in uh, in a couple of a variety of ways. So I'll see you guys in just a moment with that. Bye.